All right, we're recording. Awesome, everybody. My name is Charlie Eccles. I am the director of Supercon, and I am here joined with the one and only Dave Wheeler from Mindwave Comics here. Welcome to Supercon Online. Welcome, everyone. Uh, Dave, how are you doing today? Doing great. Staying dry, at least. It's raining outside. Hey. I know. And, uh, if, uh, if you look back at your calendars, I think today it's about 55 in Sioux Falls, and just it's pouring every single day. So, yeah, joys of it all, right? Right, right. <laughs> Gotta love the Midwest, and it's coming up on the cold season right now. Yeah, uh, time to time to put away the air conditioners. That's all. That's right. That's right. That's right. Well, Dave, uh, it sounds like you're doing all right. Uh, but uh, tell us a little bit about uh, about what you're up to right now here with uh, with the pandemic and everything like that that's going on. Anything anything on the horizon right now for you? A uh, little bit of everything. Um, Samir and I are working on the next issue of Thunder and Lightning. He's wrapping up uh, one round of uh, Devil or Moon Girl and Devil Dinosaur. Awesome. Um, so one that uh we're gonna get trucking again on that we made a little progress and then you know he he got an awesome job so it's like hey go do that come back <laughs> out later later this year early next year um i've been keeping busy doing uh custom figure commissions doing you know artwork commissions which i, I have open for this show information down below over there up down all around it'll, it'll be somewhere on there yeah <laughs> And um, and moving uh, as I uh, as I as I told Charlie right before this started, I literally had to unpack my lamp so it was light enough up here, uh, <laughs> so that this video looked uh, somewhat presentable. Um, well, I mean, <laughs> and COVID rules, man. I mean, <laughs> no matter what happens, it's COVID rules. I think so. And I think I, on my end too, we might have some video in and out here for you. But we'll we'll do our best. So you look great. Don't worry about it. You look awesome. I'm trying. I'm trying. <laughs> you as well. You're finding well, happiness and glory. Awesome. Well, Dave, give us a little bit of a rundown here for you. I, I, I've known you for uh, several years at this point here, and I'm trying to trying to think. I, I know I met you when I was a vendor for Supercon, and now I'm the director. And yeah. you've been in Mindwave Comics for a long a long time. Tell me a little bit about uh, how Mindwave got started for you. So this is year eleven for Mindwave. Um, Mindwave Comics, as it says right here. Kid-friendly comics for everyone. Um, right. Mind with Comics is uh, uh, Samir and I. Um, we've, we've been able to collaborate with a couple other artists and creators, but at the core of it, it's Samir and I. Uh, Mindwave so is consistent of both of our uh, both of our, our kind of like solo ventures. So I had Mind Blow Studios. Samir had Netwave Comics. And so we made Mind Wave comics uh, from that. So um, it's a kid-friendly all ages uh, publishing company. We have uh, roughly five titles out. We we have some kind of come and go. Uh, the core titles are Misadventures of Wonder Boy, The Bolt Strikes, and Totem. Uh, right now we're wrapping up our crossover between The Bolt and Wonder Boy, uh, and that is called Thunder and Lightning. Uh, issue three, like I was talking about at the beginning, should be coming out hopefully end of the year, early next, um, as well as some other exciting stuff that's still a little hush hush. Um, but uh, I've been lucky enough to be at Supercon every year, and I, I'm not gonna lie, I'm uh, I'm missing it something fierce. I'm missing people in general, something fierce right now. But uh, Supercon is always one of my favorite shows of the year. I always have such a blast coming out there. Um, and I'll be really bummed to, to not be there this year, but this is, this is an awesome alternative and, uh, safe for everyone. So, yes, yes. Well, and you know, uh, I know this will be being released in October here. And so people won't, won't know this, but you and I are actually talking the day that we were supposed to have Supercon. Uh, yeah. it was supposed to start today. Uh, yeah. I got a reminder on my phone yesterday cause I forgot to delete that from it. And I just had a, just a small tear just, uh, it it, oh, yeah, up. it is 2020. So when I when I set up or whenever I set up at a show, I always put a reminder on my phone the day before, usually my travel day, and it puts it says uh, get your stuff together or some iteration of that for. <laughs> <laughs> like, oh. 
<laughs> right, right, right. It's a uh, kind of. I mean, at the same time, I mean, we we have uh, we've had this awesome opportunity to adapt as nerds, I think, and not just from the con per- perspective of it, but, uh, you know, people can't go into their, or they can, but uh, not to the same light, like they're, they're not going into their comic book shops the way that they used to and that kind of thing. So things like that have changed. So for what has changed on the back end for you, uh, given that, you know, the pandemic is obviously affecting everyone. Uh, digital distribution. Um, so uh, coming soon, uh, hopefully by Early October, all of Mindwave's back catalog will be available digitally. Um, I'm finalizing a few things, so I won't say the specifics here. Hopefully, actually, by the time this airs, um, I, I can get you guys the info for that. Um, so you, you know, you can put it here or there or there somewhere. somewhere. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, you know, so doing digital distribution, getting everything formatted for that. Um, our online store um, is available at mindwavecomics.com. If you hit our store tab, you can hit us up there. Uh, we have shirts and stuff available through Redbubble. We have our store envy uh, storefront available there. Um, and if you buy something, you can always make a request for like a head sketch or something too. Um, as mentioned before, I am taking commissions. I believe Samir is too. I'm not going to speak for him though, because I know he is absolutely slammed. Um, uh, and yeah, so, you know, it's, it's that thing of finding different avenues to, to connect with people. Um, we've been keeping active on Facebook and uh, Instagram and, and whatnot. Um, and I'm going to start once, uh, I, as I said, I'm in the middle of a move. So here, I peek behind the curtain. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> We've been talking for a couple of weeks too. I mean, just as buddies and I know you've been in the middle of this move for a long time. I mean, that on a personal end, what is that like during this time here for you? Um, you know, it, it's the thing, A, I'm a, I'm a comic collector, but I'm also like a toy guy and a wrestling mm-hmm. dork. So like I have, you know, I, 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 I've been lucky enough to do some commission work and, and stuff for like the major brothers or um, the major wrestling figure podcast. Um, check it out if you're if you're a wrestling fan and you're a toy fan check it out uh good dudes um but you know it's it's that thing of packing up all all the like the collections you know all the books um I'm, i can't i can't i don't i think you can see my i have my stack of trades that's just oh, all my local comic shop here in the twin cities hooked me up with some <clears> box, <throat> comics and collectibles and uh so literally most of my stuff uh, most of my family stuff is moving in diamond boxes okay Uh, (laughs) but um yeah you know it's that thing of you can't really call up a bunch of your buddies and and say hey you know we're gonna load a truck and drive it over and then unload it uh with the way things are right now and uh so i i got a little creative ran a couple sales uh sold off some of some things and uh, I had then hired movers. So, oh, wow. okay. yeah, it's something I never thought I would do. But, uh, you know, it's one of those things that it, it'll it work. You know, it, it'll, it'll be a very hectic day. But, um, yeah, um, move into a little bit, bit bigger place, um, a, little more, a little more room for everybody. So that'll be nice. And, um, yeah, like I said, you know, once I get the studio back up and running, uh, sometime next week, hopefully fingers crossed, uh, well, and next week would be three weeks ago when this airs. I'm not positive on that, but anyways, Matt, uh, Matt checks out. Yeah. Speaking to you from the, the past, but you're in the, the past at this point. Time travel, man. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, and you know, outside of that, just uh, working with uh, the local uh, wrestling scene. While shows have been down, a lot of a lot of people are getting excited to for the possibility of socially distanced shows and whatnot here in the Twin Cities and such. So, um, uh, a lot of the the local scene uh, has been picking up as far as gear design, merch design. Uh, I, I got a crew down in Illinois now that's going to be rocking some gear and. Cool. Uh, some merch um, that I'm working on right now, uh, as well as some other folks um, around the country. So that you can be you, man. on network TV. Oh, good for you. Well, let's talk a little bit about that. Cause I don't think that it, that's public knowledge. Now 
I'm a wrestling guy. You're a wrestling guy. That's how we made our connection in the first place. Because oh, there you go, there you go. First wrestling. I will give him a plug here for you. Uh, I, you're welcome, Eric. <laughs> I just want to put out this shirt, but I love this shirt. It says "Wrestling's for Everyone." Uh, so it's a dope shirt. I, I wear it often. It's a cool shirt. And, nice. Uh, I, I miss I miss the wrestle paloozas. I miss all all. Well, I miss all shows in general. Right, and I, I'm right there with you. I mean, wrestle palooza in Minneapolis is such a. I mean, it's a party. It's a, it's our our day to guys like you and I get to let our hair down that day. Yeah. So. Good time, but yeah, you know, it, it's that thing of, um, you know, between comics and wrestling and, and whatnot. Things things have been busy, which is good. Um, mm -hmm. You know, it's, it's been nice to, to see people who are, are so passionate about what they do, um, picking up, you know, picking back up and figuring out their next steps. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, locally here in the cities, one, uh, two of my good buddies uh, started a little gear making business. So I've been collaborating with them a bunch. Um, mm -hmm. And they were like the Academy kids, um, the Academy of Professional Wrestling here in uh, Minnesota. Um, a lot of their students are working with them. So. Um, it's it's really been really fun been able to help a lot of young talent get some gear that looks on par with you know the rest of the roster so um that's definitely been part of part of my uh motivation is you know working with a lot of these these uh young guys coming guys and gals uh mm -hmm. come making sure that you know they're not just running out there in dvds you know they're running out there and in, in in gear that looks on par with everybody else because you know right you know everybody deserves a shot so and that's such an overlooked aspect of professional wrestling. Um, so guys like you, I, I don't think get the, the necessarily get the credit that you deserve because that is that that's one hundred percent. Like for me, when I do commentary, I have to show up in a suit. I don't have to show up in tights that have my name on the butt or on the side or anything like that, you know, and or any kind of special design. So I show up and I'm in my in my Sunday best. However, these guys are having a, a, all that physicality along with that. They have to have the flash. And when yeah. they come out, it has to, it really has to stand out. So guys like you uh, really do drive that home. I think from a business aspect, you know, somebody who's just a casual fan might not think about that. It, but, but one of the, one of the really fun aspects of that though, is also trying to capture, capture the characters, you know, I mean, yeah. like, um, I'll move out of the way. So you see some of these characters back here uh, from Mind Wave Comics. Uh, you know, those, that's one thing. Um, you know, it's fun to create superheroes and monsters and and stuff like that. That's super fun. But to have to embody someone's personality in a design is is really really challenging. And it's it's really fun though too because you know you're talking with some of these some of these folks that you know might. <laughs> year that's you know not just a stock piece off the rack you know mm -hmm. so um but then again you know i've gotten to work with um some really cool vets in the business um you know whether it's working on merchandise or you know new eight by tens stuff like that um you know it, it's it's really fun like it, and again like i said it kind of goes back to that passion you know uh i i remember <laughs> I remember sitting down with my good buddy Super Thunder Frog once, and uh, <laughs> we were talking about talking about the adventure of galaxies and such, and um, just talking with him and 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 hearing just the excitement and and just everything, you know, just you know everything's cranked to eleven, every, you know, everything is just that exciting, which was so so cool. And uh, I, I was I was lucky enough I got to design uh, a set of gear uh, for him um, and whatnot. And, and again, you know, he's been in he's been in this for a bit, you know. Um, and I, I'm very lucky to count him among my friends because you know that dude can go out to a crowd of hundreds, and he can go out to a crowd of tens, and it's mm -hmm. the same amount of energy. And you know what? It, it's 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 all about the show it's it's so cool to see just the the intensity and the excitement uh that comes from it i've been in the ring with thunder frog you know i've i've done shows with thunder frog where i was the ring announcer with him so i know 
exactly what you're talking about. I mean, I've done I've done some shows that are small with him, and I've done a shows with with a couple hundred uh, there with him uh, in Minnesota, and that I I cannot tell you. I mean, there's very few guys that capture the energy like Froggy does uh, yeah. the crowd, and that's I, I'm really happy that we're talking about him because I. I don't know him personally the way that you do. I've only done the ring announcing with him and worked with him on, in a professional aspect, but I can't say enough good things about him professionally because he really is crowd focused. He really does care about what the crowd is doing and he's aware of that too, which I don't think a lot of performers are aware uh, in, in the beginning of things. You know, it comes over time. But he's, he's somebody that a lot of these guys can really learn from. Well, and, that, and that's, the, that's the fun thing. I, like, I, I have... I have never marked out more than I, my, my son, Ollie loves, loves Frogger. Just <laughs> the, the frog mark you'll ever meet. Um, and I, I, I messaged him and I, I said, Hey man, you know, I, I know things are busy saving the galaxy and all that jazz. It's a little bit of a hectic time. Um, do you think I could, give you give you a shout and maybe you could talk to talk to ollie for a sec on his birthday and he mm -hmm. sent me an awesome video uh you know all rocked up you know ready to go <laughs> he, he wished wished ollie a happy birthday and i've never seen ollie happier um than than getting a a, a message from his 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 favorite superhero that's um, amazing and uh you know, but that, that's the fun part about wrestling. That's the fun part about comics is, you know, those kind of weird blurred lines between, you know, between reality um, and fiction. Um, you know, it, it's that thing of you got, you got, guy, well, a mutual friend of ours, uh, maybe not a fan favorite to some, but Mr. Rich Maxwell, um, you know, I, I've been lucky enough to work with him on several things and um, don't tell anybody. <laughs> a really good dude um, right <laughs> but you know it, it's that thing of of getting to getting to know know the guys and gals and and frogs uh <laughs> animals <laughs> yeah. you know outside of the 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 ring and and inside is is so fun because they have a passion that a lot you know a lot of comic creators have you know they're mm -hmm. They, you know, granted their, their work is much more physical, than a completely different aspect, but, you know, I remember talking with, who was it? It was one of the, one of the local fellows and I, I had just come off of like, I think it was a five week mar like a five week in a row show like run where right. it was like every weekend I had a show or I had a signing or I had an event and I had been to like, it was like Chicago, Portland uh chicago portland minnesota and then i think it wrapped up with supercon oh yeah because you had like c you were at c2e2 at, correct you Gross. can correct me if i'm wrong on that and it was that thing of like coming off of it i was just like whoo i'm tired mm -hmm. <laughs> they're just like well you got to be back on in the morning and i'm like i said do here we go all right yep. So, yep. my hair down <laughs> well, and that's it. I'm glad that we're talking a little bit about this, but you, you know, you have done I, a lot for the guys that I work with locally too. I mean, that's a, the the guys like your Austin Schmitz and obviously Rich Maxwell, who's done very well. Um, you know, everybody's so. I mean, any time that your name gets brought up. It, I mean, in the wrestling aspect, you're you're getting put over. <laughs> I mean, so. Uh, and I can't, I, and honestly too, and I'll, I'll make mention of this too, all of the graphics that you did for Supercon. I mean, you, you put together all of our guest graphics and everything like that. And you're always so humble with that. Uh, anytime I, I, I text and ask and I'm like, Dave, I really need this. Can you, and you're like, oh yeah, man, I got you. So, I mean, I can't say enough good things about you from a professional aspect either. And obviously we've known each other a little bit personally, but, and I say, I'll say good things about you on a personal level too. So. It. I mean, and that, that's the thing, though, is, I mean, if, if there's an opportunity to, to work, hey, I love working. And, yeah. and I, you know, I want to see my friends. I want to see, you know, shows like, you know, shows like Supercon, show, you know, like small shows, big shows, medium shows. I want to see them succeed, mm -hmm. you know. And it's like, if I can have a hand in that, sweet. You know, right. uh, you know I, can, I can whip up a graphic a heck of a lot faster than other people, you know, some other people. 
and you know cool you know it 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 benefits the show and you know it helps helps out a friend and you know that that's the thing that i kind of pride myself on is you know it's 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 not doing it it's not doing it for you know for your own gain it's like you know you got to think about kind of the greater good of everything you know right um yeah the end know. game if you will yeah well like yeah. last last year um uh for supercon mania yeah um, yeah um you know like I, I whipped up that poster and it was funny because i at, at the event i got to talk with with uh billy uh billy gunn and whatnot for like just a minute or two right and i went up and i said hey man i'm a, I'm a big fan you know it's, it's so awesome to see you out here and he was like oh no worries and like my name's Dave. I I did the poster, and you know, I'm a, I'm a local comic creator out of the Midwest, and we ended up talking randomly about like a match that I saw him in in Minneapolis when I was like 12. And he remembered the match. He remembered the match. He remembered the tag because it was I'm trying to remember. It was him and Road Dog. But like there was a spot where he was bouncing on the apron, like he was doing the okay. thing. Getting the you know getting ready to do the, yep. the he was jumping up and down and he slipped and biffed it. <laughs> and as as a little kid, you know the New Age Outlaws were the bad guys. They were the right. heels. They, you know they were everything you were supposed to hate. And but I loved I loved the New Age Outlaws. Their their call and 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 response uh, shtick come you know promos coming out and everything was something like if you had something that like when you came out in your entrance and you were like. Hey, and you had to say, hey, back. I was for it. I didn't care if you were good, bad, ugly, whatever. I was like, this is amazing. I'm included. Um, and, and he's like, oh, yeah. I, and before before I finished, she said something like, yeah, you know, I, I slipped on the mat that night. I'm like, yeah, man, I, I was so worried about you. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. That's actually funny that you mentioned that because I, I, I will admit this now, but when I was a kid, like, Road Dog was my hero. So right. when I got, when Billy Gunn got to come out, because and you, the people who are going to watch this know me, and you know, I hope, and some for those who don't know who I am here, I mean, I, I can be pretty, I, I can be boisterous and I can be loud and everything like that. Oh, yeah, <laughs> but that Road Dog was my hero as a kid because of that because he's just like me, like he does. The, he could talk, talk crap and then just run away, you know, and <laughs> that was Road Dog. So when Billy came in, I was like, I, all I wanted to do was tell him like, no, like when I was a kid and we would wrestle in the backyard, I was always Road Dog and my athletic brother was always Billy. <laughs> so, <laughs> uh, but that's awesome. So I, I do, I, I am curious on this because you know, we've obviously made that connection. Uh, I've always wanted to hear more about your uh, your connection because you you did some of the comic books for for Chikara as well, and I'm, I'm curious uh, how how that kind of merged your two worlds kind of merged. Well, so um, before they kind of uh, kind of I don't know if they're on hiatus or whatever right now. They, mm -hmm. they, there's some there's some stuff going on. Yeah, and we don't have to talk about that. But. Yeah, but okay, um, I, I was a huge Chikara fan. Um, you know, there was a lot of guys from the local scene here that went through there. There, you know, like Eric Cannon, Darren Corbin. You know, and, and the thing was, is uh, my buddy Ben and I actually Ben King Ginger from Heel Turn Radio, um, another fun wrestling podcast. Yes, it is. Um, yes, it is. Uh, he was a huge Chikara fan too, and we started we started watching and went. I'm like, man. I want to, I want to work for them. I want to, I want to do graphics. I want to do something. I want to shop. I want to do something. And Ben's like, well, why don't you email them? And my brain just went, <laughs> like I had never thought to reach out to them. They had social media there. They have social media. They had, you know, an email address readily available. Um, and so I dropped quack a line and said hey my name's dave wheeler i you know I'm a, I'm a local comic artist i do graphic design i do this if i can ever be of use let me know um and i didn't really expect anything from it and mm. he went well 
I, I like your stuff. Could you do a DVD cover? I said, yeah, sure. Um, and it was, it, they, for a while they were doing these combo DVD packs where it was like okay. two or three events on in one DVD case. Okay. Um, and I'm trying to think of what they called that collection. I think it was like Night of Change or something. But on the cover was NRG, which who are the Champions de Parejas, the tag team champions. Um, and uh, Hollow Wicked and Frightmare were coming out of the shadows behind them. Um, and the fun thing was, is I, I had to reach out because I had to get approval. Um, you know, so I, I, I drew the whole thing up and... I was like, okay, I don't know how to get a hold of these guys. So I shot it back to Quack. He, he said, okay, yeah, no, it should, should be good. And so I found, um, I found NR, the, both members of NRG on Facebook uh, through their fan pages. And uh, I messaged them and I said, hey, you know, is there anything that you see off with this? Because I'm a huge authenticity guy. Like, I, I really, like, if there's a little detail, I want to get it right. Okay. <laughs> and, so I, I reached out and they they apparently told Quack, Quack messaged me back and was like, hey, that, that was really cool of you to do. You didn't have to do that. Um, I think I ended up doing seven or eight DVD covers for them uh, over the years. I, I did uh, one for WrestleMania weekend like two two or three years ago, which the main event okay. was Zack Sabre Jr. Oh, so I got man. to be putting on the Chikara special on Zack Sabre Jr., which was super fun. Um, I got to draw a lot of the masks, which was a favorite of mine. Uh, I'm, I'm a huge Lucha Libre fan. Um, so uh, I got to draw, you know, Hollow Wicked, Frightmare, The Whisper, um, Dasher Hatfield before he unmasked. Okay. Uh, the Proletariat Boar, uh, you know, like all these, all these guys, Thunderfrog, um, you know, all these guys uh it was it was and it was so much fun you know like getting to draw these and then untold tales of chikara volume two came out and they were looking for for people with ideas and i said hey i one of my favorite teams there um was the colony um which was uh fire ant silver ant worker ant uh and soldier ant mm -hmm. um and the cool thing was is they're like well well who 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 do you want in your story and at this point, there were a couple of my favorites had kind of hung it up for a little bit. And I was like, well, I'd really like to do Frightmare and Hollow Wicked and Ultra Mantis Black. And they're like, who was that last one? Like Ultra Mantis Black. And he's like, well, you know, he's injured right now. He, he screwed up his back. So you can't have him, you know, up in the ring or anything. I'm like, can he be in a wheelchair? And they're like, yeah, sure. And, so <laughs> and uh, Samir and I... Uh, Samir and I worked on, <laughs> what's really sad is I was going to run over and grab the book from where it was on my comic shelf. Okay. And I'm, I'm like, dang it, it's in a box. Um, I'll send you over images and you can insert them here. And nice. here. Um, maybe here. Oh, messed with you editors. Um, there we I, go. Gonna be Sorry, Zach. Here. Sorry, um, Zach. Yeah. But <laughs> 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 uh, well, the cool thing was is uh all literally all of the members of the colony had just gotten new gear so okay. all that i had for them was out of date and like they have very intricate gear and uh so i had to reach out to each individual ant um and well, the cool part is everybody was super friendly and super awesome um and i got to, i got to know them uh pretty well which was fun um Two, two, well, one of those ants uh, stepped away. Um, two of those ants, I will say, you see on network television um, at least a couple <laughs> of week. I won't say their names, but one is freshly squeezed, and one is a very good coach for uh, the American Dragon. I'll leave it at that. Um, I figured once they put it all up on their friggin' Wikipedia articles, it's okay to say it, but... I, I can't do it. I can't I do know, it. I know, right? Um, <laughs> you and I know that, too. I mean, I knew that well before that, before anybody else, too. So every time, anytime anybody mentions the colony, I'm like, oh, they're, they're doing okay. Yeah. <laughs> so. well, I mean, technically, the, the third ant that's still wrestling is in Ring of Honor and mm -hmm. actually a very prominent part of Ring of Honor right now in a stable. 
that might have something to do with catch wrestling. Anyways, um, <laughs> you know, it's it's that thing of, of getting to work with that. The, the only downside, the one thing that was a, a heartbreaker for me was <clears throat> I wanted to do a story that was this big story that takes place in the Chikara Wrestle Factory, which is their like home base, their home stage. Right. I was like, but whenever they're in the ring, I just want a referee to like roll in the ring because it's, it's the wrestle factory. Like, mm -hmm. you know, the, the staff is always there. They're always ready to ring that bell. Right. Because I, I've gotten to be very good friends with um, uh, Bryce Remsburg, um, referee extraordinaire. And you, I just did a seminar with Bryce. So yeah. Right. yeah. The funny thing is I bet you I did the graphic for that seminar because I do <laughs> I do the sign up sheets for him. Well, oh, funny. <laughs> but uh, he is one of the nicest dudes, and I wanted to find a way so badly to like slip him into the, sh the comic, and I couldn't get him in um, because they're like, no, I need this larger than life. Like, Bright Mare and Hollow Wicked do this crazy, like, you know, they're, they're, they're doing incantations and blowing, you know, dark, dark energy of Nas Maldun against uh you know ultramantis black who's summoning the powers of um whatever magical staff he had that at that time <laughs> uh, and the colony is just just along for the ride um uh i i, I was so bummed because <clears throat> they they were actually at the point in the storyline like that i ended up kind of finishing a storyline that they were working on okay because they had kind of put it aside because they're of an injury and so I kind of wrapped that up and it was cool to see little notes kind of come through in the final performance like mm -hmm. Silver Ant at one point gets uh, possessed by um, Nas Maldun uh, the evil sorcerer who well evil entity mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, Hollow Wicked and Frightmare are the sword and shield I think sword and shield if I remember correctly of and uh uh, the thing was, is in, in my version, the mark of Nas Muldoon becomes emblazoned on the silver mask, or the silver ant mask. So, like, it, it pops up, and I said, I wanted to do, like, a two-faced thing, and they're like, no, that, that wouldn't happen. And then when the story played out, he rips off his mask, and he has a half silver ant, half dark silver ant mask. I'm like, ah! <laughs> that. And poor, God bless Samir. Uh, I, I was sending him this script and he was, he was doing rough pencils and I was doing finishes over him. So like, I get these kind of sketched figures and then I just go in and I'd, I'd hammer out, you know, like all the, all the details of the, the new, the new suits and everything. And we turned it out and it was cool. It actually opens uh, untold tales of Chikara volume two. Um, and we got to put a mind wave comics ad at the back cause I did all the pre-press for it. <clears throat> so um, but yeah, that book has a ridiculous amount of talent that is on on TV these days, right? Um, it is is kind of cool. Princess Kimberly on the cover mm -hmm. um, now, in Kimberly in, in Impact. Yep, yep. I forget what her name was in WWE now. I always called her Kimberly. Yeah, exactly. Every time that she was on, I was like, "Oh, it's Kimberly." Like, <laughs> yeah, it, but, you know, it's that thing of. We're, you know, working with them, uh, you know, they're out in Philadelphia. So, you know, I, I, it was fun because I got to know a lot of the crew. Um, it was super fun. Uh, I, like, I can't, I can't put that fact over enough. Like, going to those shows was something so special. Um, and, you know, I'll always enjoy that time. I'll always enjoy that aspect. You know, the, the, the roster there is just second to none. You know, like, the, it was so much fun um, being, being a part of that at that time. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, you know, and, and then that kind of opened up more doors here, not more door, more door. <laughs> um, no, but, um, I, I, I got to work with, uh, first wrestling here in the twin cities, uh, Eric Cannon's promotion out of first Avenue. Um, that was a super fun show because I did this comic art poster of, and I got to draw like Arya Davari and, um, uh, uh, Heidi Hold on. Hold on. in WWE. I'm gonna uh, jump into this closet here. I got one of those. What? Oh, yeah. I have one. Yeah, one second. <laughs> yeah, Colt Cabana, Chuck Taylor, <clears throat> and like one of my favorite 
the local Midwest bands, uh, Masked Intruder, which was super. Um, and yeah, just just so surreal because it was it was so dope to um, draw the draw these guys and be able to talk with them, and then you know, like at the end of the night, I literally went over to the merch booth and I'm like, hey, do you have any of those posters? Because I was going to grab one and I spaced. <clears throat> like I was having so much fun talking with people and enjoying the show. I didn't grab a poster and uh, thankfully, thankfully they had one left. And I was like, oh good. And I like ran around. And I got everybody to sign it. Nice. So I have, uh, oh, Johnny Gar Duh, was uh, the, the last guy that I got to draw. And that was like, that was, um, Gargano's and uh, Heidi Lovelace's last, and Arya's. I think those were all three of their like last shows. I think um, so. Yeah, I remember it being Arya's, but I don't remember what Heidi's was. I think that was our. I think that was all three of their last Wrestlepaloozas. Yes. Okay. That could that could make sense. I know that uh, Gargano. I remember Gargano's was a little bit before Arya's, but yeah. And. Uh, <clears throat> yeah, you know, that was super cool and super fun. Um, I've always had a blast with, with, with that crew. And I work with a lot of local promotions here in the cities, um, the Twin Cities here in Minneapolis. Um, and I've gotten to work with just some, some phenomenal, phenomenal up and comers. And, and some, some guys literally when I first started doing, you know, merch or gear design for them, you know, they were, you know, just starting out and now, um, got Mr. F uh, five belts himself, JDX. Um, you know, like that dude, the sky is the limit. I mean, you can say that about mm -hmm. so many of these guys and gals. We really could. I mean, you and I could probably talk about this Midwest wrestling scene over oh, and over and over again. I mean, we probably, I've always said that the Midwest wrestling scene has the deepest roster of any region okay. in the country. We're, we're the secret garden that everybody forgets about. Yeah, I agree. I 100% agree. And it's buried, but I do have the Heidi Loveless uh, uh, poster. So eventually I'll post that uh, after this goes, I will make sure to post that on my social media and on Supercons because that was, uh, that's one of my prized possessions because I, I think I uh, first did a show. This was right before I started getting into wrestling, but they did a show with Tommy at that oh. bar that ended up shutting down at not far from first. Now. And <clears throat> Heidi was selling those. That was uh, Mill City Nights. That was yes. the event. I was there. Yeah. Were you there? Yeah, I was I was in the front row. I ended up getting one of those ice creams falling asleep on me. Because <laughs> that was, uh, yeah, just, it was Tommy and Aria were in the main event. But that was uh, Heidi Loveless and Beta Scott, we, who are now, uh, uh, Ruby Riot and Veda is doing commentary for AEW. So, I mean, we got to see some like real talent on that show. And it was, that was yeah. a great show. Was so fun. that was, that was Mill City Fights. That wasn't the Chikara show. I was thinking of the Chikara show. I was there too, though. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Well, let's, uh, let, you know, you, uh, we can go on and on and on about wrestling, but I want to talk to you a little bit about comics because this is a comic book convention here for you. Yes. So, what, uh, it, and I don't think we've actually, we always talk about wrestling. So that's where our connection is. But uh, where did your love of comics kind of start? Because there's a love before you start doing it. So um, I grew up around it. Um, my brother is a huge comic book fan. Um, and I'm like, my dad, my dad was too. My mom loved uh, comic strips, loved, loved like, uh, like Peanuts and uh, Calvin and Hobbes and stuff like that. Okay. Um, really a lot of Dennis the Menace and Beetle Bailey, like little like books and stuff that were always around the house. Um, yeah, like I, I just grew up around it. It was just something that was always a part of my life. Um, Cause my brother would, my brother and my dad and my mom would, would read, you know, like superhero, you know, children's books and stuff like that to me. And, you know, I definitely grew up with like Mercer Mayer and, and Sesame Street and all that stuff too. <clears throat> like, don't get me wrong. But, like, I remember I had, it was a Superman pop-up book. Okay. Um, that I remember that and Ninja Turtles were, like, the, the like, superhero kids' books that I could be like, I want to read this for bedtime. And they'd be like, <laughs> okay, son. Um, or, okay, David. Um, and, uh, you know, the 
I, I've, I've gotten conflicting reports of this. Uh, my middle name's Parker. And my mom was because of a friend of my dad's. My dad said he just really liked the name from Spider-Man. And he wanted to name me Peter Parker Wheeler at one point. And my mom said, no, he might not like comics. <laughs> Joke's Oops. on you, mom. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> but, uh, you know, it, it's that thing of, I, I grew up, I grew up loving it. You know, I grew up reading comics. I grew up biking down to the grocery store or um, the hardware store and, you know, hitting the spinner rack. Um, at Christmas, my parents always would give us a $10 gift card or gift certificate to uh, either B. Dalton or Schinders, which Schinders was a local comic uh, uh, chain here in the, the cities. And B. Dalton was just another, is another book, a bookstore. Um, but if it was Schinders, I would go to the quarter bin and get the most bang for my buck. And I cannot tell you how many friggin' copies of Captain Planet number one I have because they'd have like the blind bags where it was like, you know, an inch and a half of comics for $5. I'd be like, Ooh, mm -hmm. I'm going to get two of those. And there would be like four copies of Captain Planet number one in it for some reason. Uh, <laughs> So I remember one year I got really tricky and I was like, I'm going to give these to my friends because if they come to my birthday party, which was a bunch of people coming and hanging out at the house, everybody gets Captain Planet number one. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, I mean, uh, yeah, I, I, Spider-Man was, was my drug of choice, if you will. Um, I would always, uh, you know, scour, scour for Spidey books and stuff growing up. Uh, Spider, Spider-Man, Robin, and Madman. Or okay. my, th my three, like, if I think of characters that I would, like, pick up anything, it would be those three and, and Hawkeye, I think. Okay. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, you know, it, and, it, and it's, it's that weird thing of, you know, kind of serendipity of growing up being such a, a comic dork. You know, I, I always wanted to be a comic artist. I always wanted to, to, to be doing exactly what I'm doing right now. Good for you, man. And, uh, yeah, uh, the, the uh, opportunity presented itself when I was in high school. I found out that there were a couple programs around the country that you could go to to learn how to make comics, how to become a comic artist or a sequential artist. And I applied to a school called the Savannah College of Art and Design and got in there. And lo and behold, the literally the quarter I started uh, one of my favorite Spider-Man comic artists and one of my favorite Robin comic artists, Tom Lyle, started teaching at SCAD. And uh, yeah, I, you know, I, I, I graduated from there in 09 and um, was lucky enough to call Tom my, my friend and my mentor. Um, and yeah, it's, you know, it's, it's been that weird thing kind of the whole way of weird serendipitous moments that ended up leading me here. So. Um, yeah. Sorry, that took a weird turn. No, no, you're totally fine. We got cut off a little bit here for you about when you were uh, kind of gushing a little bit about Spider-Man here for you. Okay. But now, what was it, and sorry, and this is completely because of uh, internet connection and weather, too, so my apologies to everyone who's watching. So. What, what was the question? Sorry, you cut out. Oh, no, no, no. Yeah, my, my internet's being a little bit unstable here. So we're going to, I'm going to try and get, get you in here for you. But uh, you, you mentioned that you had this love for Spider-Man and you got to learn from Tom Lyle and everything like that. What was it? Uh-oh, you froze, man. Roll, roll Reggie. <clears throat> I'm guessing the question was what brought me to like Spider-Man and what, what made me enjoy him? I'm guessing. Charlie might unfreeze here in a second and who knows, <clears throat> but for me, it was always the Char Charlie, you, you froze for a second. I'm guessing the, the question was what drew, drew me to Spider-Man. Yes. Yeah. It was. Sorry. My internet's being, being crazy right now. And right at the end of this. It's all good. Um, I, I love the fact that I could relate to Peter Parker. I could relate to being, a complete klutz and tripping over my own feet while at the same time, you know, just trying to do your best, you know, trying to, trying to save the day whenever you can, no matter what. Um, and I, I just definitely could relate to that. And it, it was that thing of the kind of never say die attitude mm -hmm. of just, you know, push, putting your, your best foot forward and 
always, you know, like the, the great power comes great responsibility type thing. Um, and, you know, I might not be able to climb walls, but, um, you know, it's, it's words that I've lived by because, you know, it's like, okay, I can't climb walls, but I can whip up a graphic pretty quick. So yeah, I'll, I'll gladly do that at, at the drop of a hat for folks. Um, you know, and that's, that's how I can help. That's how I can do. Um, you know, I, I was lucky enough this uh, summer, actually the two weeks ago, um, I've been teaching a, a class here in the cities uh, through MIWRC um, uh, but about comic books and comic book creation and whatnot. And, um, you know, the, these are kids 12 to 18, I think was the age group. And it was super mm -hmm. fun and, and getting to um, impart some, some of the weird useless knowledge that I have and <laughs> kids like freak out and be excited and, 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 you know, be excited about creating and writing and, and drawing was just something that, you know, that, that was just super cool. That's awesome, man. That's awesome. And I know that, uh, you said you, you have been teaching quite a bit too. I mean, you, you were putting in like 12 to 14 hour days too with that. It was, it was hectic to say the least. Good for you. Good for you. And I think that's something that people forget is that at everyone's core that we are talking to is that, you know, yes, we want to talk about like, I like, I definitely want everyone to check out Mindwave Comics. I want everyone to get every platform that they can. I want every wrestler I know to use you for graphics, for gear, for everything like that, because I know that you're the best. And that's not just me saying that. I legitimately think you're the best in what you do. Um, but at our, at, at our core, we're all just these like, these desperate artists trying to express ourselves. And that's what we, what I think a lot of people forget about when it comes to what we do. So. Yeah. Well, and you know, like uh, one thing I left out and I, I feel terrible about not glossing over this, but we had kind of talked about it earlier. Like one of the coolest frigging things that happened while I was at, at SCAD um, was I met, uh, I met Samir. Um, the other half of Mindwave Comics, you know, and I, I got to know him and, and see just how much passion he had for telling his own stories and um, what he wanted to, you know, put into the world. And, uh, you know, that's like you said, you know, everybody's looking, you know, looking to to put themselves out there and, and put out, you know, their ideas and, and try to help in some way. And um, that's kind of one thing that Mindwave does as a whole. Um, you know, is we, we try to, we try to have characters that represent a little bit of everybody. Um, you know, we want, we want anybody to pick up one of our books and be able to see themselves in it, or at least just have fun with it. You know, um, as it says in our mission statement, enough with the doom and gloom, we're here to bring back the rad versus the bad. No. Um, we have that, that kind of goofy kitsch that, you know, I mean, you pick up Wonder Boy and you have the Diabolical Dictator Dinosaur, the Hadosaurus Rex, and Captain Toast running around. <laughs> um, you know, you pick up the Bolt and it, it's funny because I, I had someone bring this up the other day because um, they had, they, they wrote a review of the Bolt and said it was so cool to see, um, you know, a young African-American teen, you know, well, yeah, it's, a, it's another, you know, African-American teen with lightning powers, you know, the, the twist of it being tied to Greek mythology and whatnot was something they didn't expect. And, you know, it was something, something fun and different. Um, and that was just, that was cool, you know, like to, to kind of see that, oh, you know, okay, cool. Someone's, someone's picking up what we're laying down. So, um, yeah. That's amazing, man. Oh, and I know I picked up copies of Wonder Boy every time that you come out to Supercon. I have not picked up copies of Totem or, or The Bolt. And I, you know, definitely once next you guys time. Have something, yeah, I mean, it's not like we're never going to see each other again. So. <laughs> well, hit, hit off, off, uh, off meeting and I'll, I'll, I'll hook you up. I know. I know you would. <laughs> well, and that's a, that, and, I, I want to talk a little bit, just even briefly, about you know that because I know Tulsa, especially in South Dakota, with you know we have such a rich uh, history with uh, with Native American and history and everything like that. Totem is one of very few comics that I have seen uh, with a Native American uh, as the featured character in that. So, what kind of drew you to doing that? Um, I, I spent some time in New Mexico, and I made some really good friends who belong to the Apache Nation, and. Um, we got to talking about comics one day and, and they talked, um, 
how so many native characters were derivative and mm -hmm. you know terrible stereotypes or just out, outdated in general <clears throat> and so i said well, why don't we make one I'll, I'll write it you know let's let's talk and uh you know i i created uh dana coronatus um aka the totem um and it took some elements from uh, Apache legend and folklore and, and their stories. Um, it took a little bit of, you know, some, some of my friends and some of my friends' relatives. Uh, there were some things that got put into the book that uh, one of my friends, his sister, um, at the time was about the same age as Dana was. And uh, there's a lot of her in there from stories that he told me. Okay. Uh, the, the thing was, is we focused on creating a character that was native but not a, a stereotype, you know, because, you know, a native person can, you know, I, again, I'm, I'm a gigantic white dude, you know, I, I know nothing of this. And that, that was the thing is I focused really hard on talking, talking and asking questions and trying to make this something, try, trying to make the story and the character some, like something more, more representative and more more fun you know like and and less how oh, people have about speaking right. broken <clears throat> you know it's that thing of and 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 that was something that uh actually uh, again the class that i just taught was through miwrc which is the minnesota indigenous women's resource center um, oh okay and so we focused on because all, all the 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 kids in the class uh were were native um, and we're from around here. One, uh, one was from Portland, <clears throat> no, Washington, Washington. And, uh, you know, it was that thing of, of, we, we talked about representation. We talked about, uh, cultural impact, cultural representation, as far as, you know, things happening in comics and, and how, you know, good and bad, um, representation of that. And, um, it, you know, it was it was that thing of coming coming at this the class from that perspective was something entirely different for me. Um, but at the same time, it, it was seeing there are a lot of terrible uh, representations, but there are are actually more good ones than I thought, um, which was cool. And um, totem being included among those uh, by a couple of the students was really uh, neat. Like it was it was something that really warmed my heart a little bit of, of just going, Oh, cool. Like you like this, you see, okay. You like, you like Dana, you like totem, you know, you like this, what you like, what we're, we're putting out there. And as long as we have, have people liking what we're doing, Mindwave will keep, keep putting it out and, and keep trying to at least, at least put something out there that, you know, people can enjoy. That's amazing, man. That's awesome. And I'm, I'm really happy to see that, you know, you're, you're taking the responsibility of, I, uh, asking the questions and that kind of thing. I think that's really important in this day and age. Um, obviously with everything that's going on, I mean, my, my, I shouldn't say my goal, but that in 2020, I think that's one thing that I, I think everybody should, should take away is that we need to ask more questions. We need to come to more of an understanding. We need to, we need to sit down and shut up and listen, uh, you know, and that's kind of where we need to start. And that, I mean, I, I don't care who says something bad about that because that's where we got to start. So. No, oh, I got you. Yeah. But, um, well, Dave, you know, we're right at the end of this here for you, yeah, but I, you know, we could talk forever and ever and ever. Uh, you, sure. I know you've gotten a million shout outs from, uh, from Matt Cardona and Kurt Hawkins here. <laughs> but, and, but tell me a, a little bit about how that got, got going and then we'll kind of wrap this up. Um, that, the funny thing is, so that got going because, um, I'm a subscriber to their, their, uh, their Patreon, they, you know, like you can oh. get a couple, couple bucks a month and you get access to a Facebook group and all that stuff. And it, it was just something I, <clears throat> I've enjoyed their podcast for so long. And, um, you know, they were doing all these interviews and stuff and it, it was just something fun. And, uh, one day I, I, I've been a huge mark for them. I've been a huge fan of, of Zack Ryder and Kurt Hawkins since they've been the edge heads. Edge is one of my favorite mm -hmm. wrestlers like edge and Christian were my jam. Like those are two of my, favorites like the, the goats if you will um so the edge heads you know were naturally um zach Ryder and kurt hawkins just amazing and um you know they won the tag titles at what was it 35 in their hometown like this 
you know, huge moment against uh, FTR. Or I can't even remember what they used to be called now. The Revival. The Revival. There we go. Um, yeah. And uh, they didn't. They didn't get figures made of them. Like in that gear, like uh, Hawkins had this awesome like Jets themed gear, and Ryder had gear that was themed after my favorite uh, WrestleMania gear of all time, the WrestleMania twenty Christian gear. Okay. Uh, and like just toyetic as heck like and they didn't make toys and i was like you know if i'm gonna have a rider and hawkins on my shelf i'm gonna i'm gonna make that version because like i love that that was such a cool moment like these guys were the ultimate underdogs they won their titles at you know the tag titles at you know in their hometown at wrestlemania uh it broke hawkins losing streak all this stuff and it was like and no toy so i made i made a rider and this was before they got released and i made a rider and i posted it like hey you know check it out you know i'm pretty stoked that's how this came out and i got dm'd by by cardona by matt and he's like i need one i'm like huh this is, this is real. So um, I, I made made the set of WrestleMania 35, uh, Hawkins and Ryder, and I, I showed him, and he was like, yep, need a set. So I made a set of Hawkins and Ryder for Ryder, um, and, you know, I got, got to talking with, with uh, him and more, more from the side of the um, podcast and whatnot, which they use their, their real names, and now, now their ring names, uh, Matt Cardone mm-hmm. and Brian Myers. Uh, of AEW and Impact Wrestling. Yeah, um, and I, Impact. That's awesome. Yeah, you know, and it was the thing of getting to know them and then getting to know their producer, Mark Sterling. Um, you know, and they're just they're such cool guys, um, and they're they're huge nerds. Like they're, I mean, they're they're Jack to the gills, and God knows I want want to at least try to emulate that somewhat. But you know. Right. <laughs> talking with them they're such huge toy dorks and uh you know and to see the again to see that passion come through was so cool and so i I, like i did that set and i ended up doing a lot of those sets and um during specifically during the pandemic um and i actually got laid off from my old day job okay doing wrestlemania 35 uh matt matt and brian's uh was uh you know helping put put a little extra scratch in the in the coffers as it were and um to as kind of like a a thank you to those guys um i asked all three of them what's your favorite wrestling like wrestling figure format like what was your favorite what was your line growing up some people like hasbros some people like jack's bone crunchers some people like ruthless aggression some people like and some people love those ljns and stuff like that those originals that came out yep and so um, Ryan Cardona really liked Bone Cruncher. So I made the Bone Crunch in Borowski. I made him in his, actually his AEW debut attire. Um, That's awesome. Let me see a little early. Um, uh, and so I got, to, I got to be friends with their gear designer too, who's a really, really cool dude from across the pond. Um, and uh, I made him as the Bone Crunching Broski. I made Myers a ECW old San Francisco toy makers style uh, Prince of Queens, Brian Myers, the most professional wrestler, Brian Myers in his new year. Uh, and I literally, uh, I just packed him up. Uh, Mark's favorite was the lubes, WCW Galoobs. Okay. And, uh, so I'm making a smart Mark Sterling Galoob. Uh, nice. <laughs> I literally, <laughs> literally to my, to my right. Um, and, you know, again, it's just, it's been that cool thing of just kind of befriending them and, and getting, to, getting to talk with them, which is surreal. Like, it was really surreal at first. I mean, it still is because it's like, dude, I remember like my brother and his buddies getting like the headbands with, yeah, the- <laughs> <laughs> right. ooh, ooh, you know, that whole thing. And like, I, I remember thinking it was the coolest thing. It was not. I had like the hair binder that I'd like in, in like, God, when was that? high school i would okay. wear like you know around like a, like a choker and it's like oh, funny <laughs> but i was like oh edgeheads right 
and now you know I'm I'm friends with them. But I mean, that's that's kind of the story of the wrestling business as a whole. Like I've gotten mm-hmm. to I've gotten to befriend so many of these guys and gals that I grew up just being huge fans of, and you know, watch you know, like we used to pile as many people into my parents' basement as we could. Everybody would chip in five bucks for pizza and you know paying for the pay per view. You know, we'd have like mm-hmm. you know fourteen, fifteen people down in the basement watching you know (laughs) and you know it's it's that thing of getting to getting to talk to talk to these guys and getting to getting to genuinely know some of them has been just one of the coolest things i mean it's the same thing with the comics industry like i cannot tell you how many people i've i've gotten to meet that i grew up just freaking out about and Mm -hmm. that not among my friends and it's it's the coolest feeling in the world and um yeah, I'll, I'll always be grateful for that. I mean, that's that's always been one of the coolest things, um, is just kind of being able to 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 go on this weird adventure and you know get to get to do what I'm doing. Very nice. Well, that sounds like a good note for us to end here, Dave. You know, I think uh, you know we're we're a little bit over on our time, but you know, I'm the director. And we're going to make this happen. So, <laughs> but uh, Dave, I honestly thank you so much. It, I don't I. I hate that we live four hours away because I, I would, I want to hang out with you more often. Soon. So, well, you know, once it stops being a pandemic, we'll figure something out. We'll figure something out, but uh, make sure to follow Mindwave Comics, Dave Wheeler on all of the social media that he's got. Uh, make sure to check out all those awesome figures uh, and every one of the comics. I've, and we'll keep you guys updated with the digital formats like you talked about. So, but uh, my name is Charlie Eccles. This is Dave Wheeler. And thanks again, Dave. I appreciate it. It's all good. Anytime.